Hello and welcome back to Bloomington Tutors. Today we're going to be doing one of the harder parts of Excel, which is if statements. Now we're going to do some simpler ones and a few harder ones. Now if functions can be much easier than the ones in this database and they can be much harder. It's just good to practice, practice, practice. Now we're back again with Dunder Mifflin and we're going to be calculating employee salaries. So every employee has a starting salary and then we give them certain bonuses depending on how long they've been in the business, their position, sales, things like that. So the first bonus is the manager bonus. And you can see down here, managers get a $5,000 bonus. So we'll start our if statement. You can see down here it says managers, except in job title there's nobody that says manager. It says general manager. So we're going to use the text general manager. If we use the text manager, it wouldn't work. So we'll set up our if statement equals if. Then we have our logical test. So what must be true? Their job title must be general manager. So we'll select this specific person's job title. It doesn't matter that they're actually a general manager. They could have been a salesman, anything like that. You just select the row that you're in. So this person must be general manager and if that is true if they are a general manager then what do they get a five thousand dollar bonus and it's safe to assume that everyone else gets zero and Michael Scott is a general manager so he got five thousand nobody else is so they get zero now we're getting on to the sales bonus salesmen who make a sale get five hundred dollars commission per sale okay so they must be a salesman in order to get this commission. And then if they are a salesman, they get $500 per sale. So this one's a little bit harder than the last one. So if their job title is a salesman. So job title equals sales. Again, salesmen is what the instructions say, but it says salesman over here. So we're going to use salesman. So what do they get if it's true? Well, every sale that they've made, which is indicated in the sales column, they get $500. If not, they get nothing. Now the client bonus. There's a $500 bonus if he or she services 20 or more clients. So this doesn't actually matter what their position is per se, even though it looks like only salesmen have clients. What matters is that they must serve 20 or more clients. So if their clients are greater than or equal to 20 then they get $500 if not nothing and there you go everyone servicing 20 or more clients will get a $500 bonus now the seniority bonus An employee who has been working at Dunder Mifflin the longest will get a thousand dollar bonus now to find the earliest hire date we have to use a function from one of our earlier um, videos, which is the min function. So if their hire date equals the min hire date, so you select that range, then they get $1,000. If not, they get nothing. And there you go. Michael Scott is the earliest employee. The accountant bonus. Accountants get $1,000 for every year they have worked for Dunder Mifflin. They must be an accountant, so we'll show that if their job title equals accountant, then they get $100 for every year they have worked for Dunder Mifflin. So now we're going to use another formula from an earlier video, which is the date diff. Now, as we recall, the date diff goes like this early date, which would be the higher date, later date, which we're going to use today's date, so today, and then month, day, or years, which we want years, so quote, why, quote. I'm going to move up over here so you can see this a little bit better. So what do they get if they're not an accountant? Nothing. Yeah. Okay, the last one here. Now this one is the more complex if statement. Like I said, these will be on your exam. The best way to do them is get practice, practice, practice with them. If a salesman has at least 25 clients and 15 sales, they are preferred 
But if a salesman has at least 15 clients, or at least two sales, they are valued. If someone is a manager, they are essential. Everyone else is qualified. So the best way to approach nested ifs is do it one part by one part. So we're going to do that first sentence there. If a salesman has at least 25 clients and 15 sales, they are preferred. So that and word is an argument word. And we're going to use that at the beginning of our sentence to indicate that we have more than one logical test that must be true. So and. So the first part is they must be a salesman. Second part is have at least 25 clients. And the third part is they must have 15 sales. So they must be a salesman, so equals salesman and, that's what that comma indicates, and have at least 25 clients. So at least is an inclusive word, so greater than or equal to 25 and have at least 15 sales. So we'll go to sales greater than or equal to 15. Okay, now that that first logical test is done, we're going to close that statement. So what if they get if they're true, that's true, preferred. I'm going to move up here again. What if they get if that's false? Well, there's a few things they can get. So when there's a few options for the false statement, that's when we start another if statement. So we'll read the next one. If a salesman has at least 15 clients or at least two sales, they are valued. They must be a salesman, number one, and they must have 15 clients or at least two sales. So if they are a salesman again, and they've done at least one of two things, and those two things are indicated by an or. So we'll do our or here in the middle, or they have at least 15 clients greater than or equal to 15, or at least two sales, so greater than or equal to two. We'll close our or, because that condition's done. Now we're gonna close our and, because what we just said was, they must be a salesman first and foremost, and they must do one of two things, have at least 15 clients, or at least two sales. So now that our logical test is done, we'll close that and, comma, what do they get if that is true? They are valued. So what if that isn't true? Well, again, there's still two options. So we'll do another if statement. So if someone is a manager, they are essential. So this one's kind of simpler. There's no and or or. It's just if this equals, again, general manager, then they are essential. Now, what if they're not any of those above things? Well, there's only one more option. Everyone else is qualified. There's only one more option, and we're going to show that with the last value if false statement. So everybody else who's not any of those things is qualified. And then we must close our parentheses until we get back to the black parentheses. There you have it. So I did a little uh, conditional formatting on the names and here you go here's everybody so these were our if statements they may seem a little difficult in the beginning like I said it's just practice they'll get a lot easier a lot more natural the more you do them I highly recommend doing this database again and again and again until that last one makes concrete sense if this didn't make as much sense to you and you'd like another session with your tutor feel free to book another one. I'm sure they'll be happy to help you. Again, this is very important core fundamentals of your K-201 class. This is very important. Book another session, get acquainted with it, know it 150%. Again, this has been Bloomington Tutors, and we wish you a good luck on your final exams.